Sewer Bowlers are still one of the best troops at Town Hall 13, but without these tips, you can still fail regardless of how many hours you put in. So I'll be breaking down everything from the best hero equipment, the different versions that you can run, and simplifying each step to help you 3 star any base. But first, we need the best build for each hero to give you a strong foundation to start with. Let's start with the Grand Warden. There are specifically two sets that I would recommend running based on the level of your other equipment and of course your personal preference. The Eternal Tome and Healing Tome combo is my personal favorite for Super Bowlers to help support them with a massive healing aura. This set can really help heal the Super Bowlers or even your heroes since it's such a strong heal. It really helps anything stay alive for that little bit longer. Typically, if you're running this set, you will want to bring the Apprentice Warden if you can. The Eternal Tome and Life Gem combo is another one that can work as Super Bowlers do synergize pretty well with the additional HP that the Warren provides. However, this does mean that the healers need to stay on the Super Bowlers for as long as possible. This though does allow you to have a little bit more flexibility with the army comp. This is especially true since you won't have access to using the Apprentice Warden when you have the Life Gym equipped. It usually just doesn't make any sense to do so. As for the Warden's Fireball and Rage Gem, it's just better not to use those as there are just better options. Just like there, it's a better option to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for more high quality guides like this. As for the Barbarian King, the Giant Gauntlet and Rage Vile combo is going to be his best. Not only is this the best set in the game, but it's incredibly flexible regardless if you're using him for funneling or if you are having him in the base smashing defenses. However, keep in mind that you can still run the Gauntlet with the Vamp Stash if you much prefer that for its really nice heals. However, it's usually better just to have the Gauntlet and Rage combo for its quicker funnel, huge damage, and of course, tankage. With the Archer Queen, her best set is using the Frozen Arrow and Invisibility Vial. This often is great for supportive queens as it provides the slow on defenses and makes it easier to get through enemy heroes and enemy CC troops. However, if you don't have the Frozen Arrow, you can always run the Healer Puppets as it's not a bad option, and of course, adding more healer to your army might not really be a bad idea, especially if you're losing them throughout the attack. And lastly is your royal champion. She's sticking to her defaults. She gets no new equipment, so she's stuck with the royal gem and seeking shield combo. Outside of hero equipment, your siege machines play a massive role in the super bowler smash. The siege barrack is one of two siege machines that you can often run. This should be used on bases with narrow compartments towards the outside, which makes a flame flinger a bit more difficult to use as there's no key defenses that are directly targeted. This should also be used out of range of defenses, but you can use the king or a giant to soak up damage before placing it down. You may also want to try the flame flinger as it's great for funneling as well. This is mostly good against bases that have wider compartments that are easy to clear, specifically ones that are directly targetable making it a lot easier. Keep in mind that you do need to keep this away from mortars, expos of any mode, and teslas or even skeleton traps, as they are all great ways of countering the flame flinger if you're not careful. Use a tank like the yeti or barbarian king, or even have the grand warden tank for your flame flinger, which can alleviate this issue, but is often better to place the flame flinger away from these areas so you don't have to worry. If a mortar locks on and gets two shots on it, it's completely fine, but if it gets a lot more, it can be a devastating attack. Now with that said, here is the default army comp that I would recommend running in most situations. We also have a version that uses the recall queen walk or queen charge. This doesn't really change the army, but rather it changes the spells, but we'll break down both versions and how you can use both of them. Now to set up your attack, you're going to want to start with funneling. You have two choices to do so, the warden walk and the recall queen charge or queen walk. 
With a Warden Walk, you are mostly looking to clear buildings on the outside of the base and also set just enough of a funnel. You want to be sure to place the Grand Warden followed by 5 healers right behind him. Be sure that you are not placing any ground units to help funnel him that are over a total of 20 housing space, as he will start to follow that group of troops. You also want to make sure that those ground troops, if you're using them, are not taking damage before the Warden or else the healers are going to switch off. Also keep in mind that the Grand Warden is not as strong HP wise and will take a lot of damage from a Tesla farm or three or more point defenses. So be sure to use him out of range of too much damage so you can create a good funnel. This Warden Walk should last anywhere between 30 seconds to one minute at most. This is going to give your warden walk more than enough time to create the funnel for your super bowlers. While you're walking the warden, you could actually use the flame flinger paired with him as the warden walk can tank expos and mortar fire while allowing the flame flinger to have more access to the base. Once he has set a solid funnel, you can lure him back by placing troops or even the queen within his aura so he can start moving into the base with them. Now, if you have a lower level Grand Warden or you see value in charging or walking your queen to set the funnel for your Super Bowlers, this is another good option. Regardless of what you choose though, this should last anywhere between 45 seconds and 1 minute and 10 seconds. This should give you more than enough time to get your queen in and to recall her out. Since this does use a queen walk or queen charge, funneling is just as important. In this case, using troops like baby dragons can help create the funnel, but if you plan on not taking any super wall breakers, a good choice is to use sneaky goblins as you just need to look for bases with holes in the wall segments to use the sneaky goblin. You may also want to consider the use of yetis as they can create the funnel and clear out trash buildings while also clearing out defenses over walls thanks to the yeti mites. Once a funnel is set, be sure to drop in your queen with five healers to start you, your queen charge or queen walk. If you are charging your queen into the base, try to use as little rage spells as possible. So if you do need to use one, it's completely fine. If your queen is forced to an ability though, which I bet most will have that happen, as long as you can get the value and keep your queen alive, that really doesn't matter if you lose the ability on her. As long as you are able to clear a nice area and then recall her out, that's the name of the game. Now, if you are walking your queen, you can use your Barbarian King in that open wall segment to charge into the area and clear out a huge amount of value. Your queen just needs to be able to create a part of a funnel, which means you can have your king clear a larger area from that recalled position that your queen was in. Once you've gotten the value though, either from the queen walk or queen charge, regardless of what you're doing, recall her out with the five healers. But be sure not to miss that recall on the queen or the healers or else you're going to be in for a bad time. But it's not a bad time to use my creator code, code corrupt to support me in everything I do here on the channel. Now, regardless if you are running the Warden Walk or Recall Queen, cutting off the Super Bowlers is important to maintain control. If you're using the Warden Walk, I typically recommend using the Barbarian King with your Seed Machine to help cut off one part of the funnel. That way you can get your Super Bowlers in. However, if you're running a Recall Queen, things can get a little bit complicated. If you're running a Queen Charge, you can typically use your King with the Seed Machine to cut off the other side. However, if you are using a Recall Queen Walk, then you might want to use your Barbarian King in the Queen Walked area that you left behind from recalling your Queen and let your King clear that while the Siege Machine clears the other side of the base. Either way, this is going to help you cut off both sides of your funnel in order to get your Super Bowlers in and not have them stay on the outside of the base. Now, regardless of the version that you're running, the smash portion is always going to remain the same. Once the funnel is set on both sides, send in your super bowlers with supportive units, such as ice golems or even the apprentice warden. If you are running a recall queen though, be sure to place down the recall so you can also have the healers too, and of course your queen. Use a super wall breaker if you have them to open walls at the beginning to make it a lot easier to get in. As you move into the base, 
work in with an early rage for your super bowlers to start moving in. Typically, you want to get to the town hall compartment regardless if it's in the core or if it's offset, or if you didn't remove it already with the recall queen. From the core, use another rage spell followed by using a jump spell to get a little bit deeper into the base. You may also want to use a super wall breaker if you're taking them to get a little bit deeper before you place in your jump, but it all depends if your super wall breaker can even make it that far or if you are using one or two jump spells. As for the warden's ability, you'll want to be sure to use that as you're going into the town hall. This means that if you're going into an offset town hall, you're going to use it a lot earlier, but if you've already dealt with the town hall or the town halls in the core, you want to use it in in the core of the base to keep everything alive. Outside of that, your super bowlers will be able to continue to work around the base with your CC troops there to support them while they're on the back end. Speaking of which, you're always going to be sending in your royal champion on the back end of the base to clear out defenses that your super bowlers might have missed. This includes things like scatter shots, inferno towers, and even the Eagle artillery. Be sure to use any spells that you might have left over to support her, such as freeze, invisibility, or even the skeleton spells can help. If you are tank taking super hogs though, it's a perfect way to have much needed distraction while also having support while your royal champion is moving around. Outside of this, this should be enough to help clean up the rest of the base. You might want to take things like wizards, archers, or even minions that will help clear out the back end and will also help you speed up so you don't get a time fail so you can get yourself a three star. Now this should allow you to have plenty of information to go out and practice this army and if you feel confident you can get the three stars with this really strong attack. Be sure though to check out my Queen Charge Lalo guide if you're still looking for a super strong Town Hall 13 air attack.